Back in the 1980s, it seemed everyone wanted to solve the Rubik's Cube. So much so, its inventor, Professor Erno Rubik, was treated like a rock star. But even he couldn't solve the Cube's greatest mathematical mystery. It's generated a mathematical problem that's taken some great minds three decades to bust. It's called God's number. Why? Well, it's the idea that if you ask God to solve a mixed up cube, he'd always be able to do it in the least number of moves. For the simplest mix up, it takes just one. But what about the hardest, most scrambled cube possible? How many moves would that take? Well, that's what's known as God's number. I've twisted that cube three times. Yeah. That can't be solved in only two moves. So God's number can't be two, it's got to be more than two. So by finding complicated cubes, you can keep pushing God's number up and up and up. The problem is there are 43 quintillion possible combinations. And finding the perfect solution for each one is beyond even the most talented mere mortal. How many moves does it take you to solve a cube? Usually it would take about 50, 55 moves for me to solve it. 15-year-old Felix Zemdegs is the fastest cube solver on the planet. His world record stands at 6.65 seconds. And to reach that speed, he has just fractions of a second to choose multiple algorithms from 100 or so that he's memorised. Algorithm is uh, basically a sequence of moves. It could be anywhere from like one move to 20 moves or so. And it'll, it'll do a particular thing that you want it to do, like move three corners around in a particular way or something like that. We'd known for a long time there was a cube that took 20 moves to solve. Then you come at it from above as well, showing that any cube can be solved in 70 moves, in 56, in 28, and you slowly bring those two numbers together and eventually we trap the number from above and below. It had taken 25 years to prove that any cube could be solved in just 26 moves. When Californian computer programmer Tom Rakiki took on the challenge, he lost sleep in the process. For the last five years, solid. Every night as I put lie down, I was always thinking, what's the next step? How can I make this faster? What's the next improvement I can make? Tom's first three attempts brought the upper limit on God's number down to 22 moves. Then, in one last try, he put together a team that included John Dethridge. He's an Australian computer programmer working at Google headquarters in California. We discussed back and forth a lot of his algorithms that he was working on and I eventually said, think big, Tom. If you're going to prove the actual number, how much computer time would you need? And he said, oh, it would be about 35 years at home. Uh, but I said, well, at, at Google we have uh, plenty of leftover computer time that we can, we can donate to that. Now, 43 billion billion different combinations is too many even for Google's computers. So the first thing the guys had to do is break that problem down into a number of manageable pieces. By breaking it up into about 55 million uh, problems, each of which worked on billions of positions, you could just distribute it on a whole bunch of computers. And that was really the key thing. 35 years worth of computing time later, Tom and his team had the answer. So, what is God's number? God's number is 20. So what was it like coming up with God's number? It was really a nice crossing of the finish line, as it were. But in a way, it's almost bittersweet, because I was sort of hoping that there'd be a position that would take 21. You know, I was really searching for a position that was harder than anyone knew, and uh, that didn't come through. So, but, but no, it's, it's been amazing. We got email from Erno Rubik. Yeah, Rubik sent us an email. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> oh, really? that's, that's been amazing. Oh, really? He's been wondering himself. Yeah.